What does filmed for IMAX mean? It isn't just a movie that'll look great on IMAX's screens. It means that hiding from a sandstorm feels like fear in every flicker. And every triumph is felt in every sound wave. And the things we've only imagined, you can truly experience those too. That's what filmed for IMAX means. Get tickets to experience Dune Part 2 now and IMAX's exclusive expanded aspect ratio. Okay, everybody, we took this week off, but we're going to share one of our classic episodes. Enjoy. have done that. He was a good man. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Michael E. Cohen II, and with me via the interwebs is... Matthew Giant Spider Pass. Alrighty. So, you're really on the webs. Yep. As a spider. And literally on the World Wide Web, yes. Yes. A giant World Wide Web. Mm hmm. There's an invasion. There's an invasion of webs and lots of worldwide thereof takeover. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, uh, today we're covering a nice little, uh, Silly sci-fi film from that was released on October twenty fourth, nineteen seventy five. The uh, classic, the giant spider invasion, <laughs> directed by Bill Rabane and uh, written by. Robert Easton and Richard L. Huff. Music by Bill Rabain. And starring the likes of Steve Brody as Dr. J.R. Vance, Barbara Hale as Dr. Jenny Langer, Alan Skipper Hale Jr. <laughs> as Sheriff Jones. <laughs> yes, Skipper, as in mm -hmm. Gilligan's big buddy. Anyways, um, and then uh, <laughs> we have uh, Leslie Parrish as Ev Kester and Robert Easton as Dan Kester. Christine Schmittmer as Helga. Kevin mm. Kevin Brody, the son of Steve Brody, as Dave Perkins, and Bill Williams as Dutch. Yep. Good old Dutch. Yep. 
and uh, Bill Williams was married to Barbara Hale, who also was in the movie as Dr. Jenny Langer, as we said. So, yeah. There's a little bit of nepotism in this movie. Yeah. There's a father and yeah, a son, get... and then there's a <clears throat> husband and wife. And then there's two people with the last name Hal that I don't believe are related to each other. So, um... <laughs> you know, it's, it's a package deal. Yes. You get both of for the price of one, so, you know... Yes. <laughs> and the movie did cost $300,000. Which is not a lot of money back then. No, not even back then. Yeah. <clears throat> it made $15 million, so that's a pretty good yes. um, you know, profit. <laughs> this was a very successful film. Surprisingly. Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> it was uh, filmed in um, Easton with Easton and, uh, oh no, Easton, who, um, was the, sorry, Robert Easton, who was the, uh, who was a friend of, uh, of, uh, Robert, of, of Bill Redbane. I mean, um, he wrote the, he came up with the idea. Robert Easton was also the, uh, creepy, pedophilic, um, guy in the movie, and um, <laughs> but uh, the film was shot in Merrill, Wisconsin, and Gleason, Wisconsin. <clears throat> so, what happened in this movie here, Matt? Wow, uh, <clears throat> so many, so many things. I mean, it's kind of a weird movie like that where there's actually a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of dialogue in it, for one thing, which I was surprised to see because I was expecting some kind of like silly spectacle type of movie. But really, the first, I want to say almost the first half of the movie is pretty much just mostly dialogue, except for like the very beginning when the, when the, 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 the eggs or the meteorite or whatever it was crashes into, um, you know, this person's farm and, uh, and then, you know, we don't really see much of, of that afterwards except for, like, you know, a spider crawling here and there or whatever. And it kills one person, I think, immediately. But then we don't really see much of that until about, I want to say, almost 40 minutes into the film after that. And um, yeah. basically, it's about this, like, meteorite or something crashes into this guy's farm in uh, Wisconsin somewhere. And uh, it just, like... It it's, it starts off like a really small spider, but it just keeps getting bigger throughout the movie. They didn't really explain that why it got bigger, but it did. And then um, and there was like more of them too, like little eggs. So like there was like all kinds of spiders just kind of climbing all over the place around the farm and other parts of the of the town. Um, it kind of had like this weird like religious undertone to it like i don't know if if they were really saying like you know it's religious but like they there's like this revivalist preacher in town who was like talking about like the wages of sin and all this kind of stuff and and that kind of played into the whole like apocalyptic aspect of the movie of like you know those giant spiders going around killing people and we we can't stop it and all this kind of stuff and there was like this dude Acting in this movie is hilarious. Some of it's really good. Some of it's just terrible. It's kind of weird. It's like you get some people who are like almost acting like they're like Shakespearean, like taking this movie so seriously. Then you've got other people who are like just obviously not really there. <laughs> you know? and, and and you literally have Alan Hale Jr. phoning in his performance because half the yeah, half, half of his performance is him sitting at his desk on a phone. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he's literally phoning it. And, and he plays this guy who's just, like, way too, like, jovial. Like, I mean, like, everything's a joke to him. Literally everything. Like, Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same kind of character he played on Gilligan's Island and, I think, every, everything else I've ever seen him in. 
but I've only yeah. seen him in a few things, so I don't know. So yeah, me me he, too. I've only seen two he, things. Yeah, he could have more depth to his acting abilities than I know. I don't know. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember what else happened because I, I watched it a week ago and I kind of watched it again, and um, because <clears throat> a lot a lot of there is a lot of depth to it, so it's kind of hard to pin it down because like it almost seemed like they were trying to make like three different movies all at the same time. So it's kind of hard to like, cause like there's so many different like plot points They're like plot a there's plot B and there's, then there's plot C and it all comes back to the preacher guy at the very end when they start playing his, like his fire and brimstone speech or whatever, or his sermon. Yeah. I mean, like, according, according to uh Wikipedia, there are several subplots. Did you want me to read them off? Yeah, like because I I can only think of three, but yeah, uh, I'd be three main ones. Like the yeah, go ahead. Okay, the subplots include Dan Kester and his hate hate relationship with his wife Ev. <laughs> um, Dan's adulterous affair with the local barmaid Helga. <laughs> um, Dave Perkins' attempt to make out with Ev's underage sister Terry. Mm. Um. <laughs> A fundamentalist preacher leading a revival meeting. Doctors Vance and Langer getting involved in a somewhat of a romance, all the more notable as the two lead actors were also in their early to mid-50s when the movie was made. (laughs) Um, The eventual panic that results when the townspeople are confronted with the spider. And then the... Invasion is deduced with various scientific sounding language to be the result of somewhat interdimensional gateway and is ultimately <laughs> and at the end it's thwarted by the doctors. Um yeah, it's this movie is funky as all get out. <laughs> yeah. It it really it really is cuz it's like it's like there's so many different like genres going on at once. Like, you got like the you got like the stereotypical hick people, and then you got like these sciency people like using this jargon that nobody. I mean, like I'm used to hearing stuff like this all timed off from like watching the Flash and stuff. So like like oh I get it, it's a parallel universe, sure, but that's no problem. Like of yeah. course, you know, like you know, to me like but like I'm thinking 1975 audience that that must have been like way out there. Like and, and, and even <laughs> then, I don't know if their science is really uh, scientific, if if you will. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like pseudoscience for you know or or. Uh, Oh, gee whiz! Kind of science for movies, you know that it's like, yeah, sure, that ex- you know, plot devised science, right? Because like, yeah, when they said something about that. the, yeah, because when they said something about like the neutron, I was like, neutron, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Because usually in the newer stuff, they're talking about like tachyons or negative tachyons. I'm like a neutron. That's that's so old school, man. That's so old school <laughs> sci-fi. Neutrons. We all know that neutrons can't. You know, cause a parallel dimension. That's like grade school right there. Of course, we know that. But no, <laughs> I'm a bigger fan. Yeah, of, like, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of Ultrons than the Neutrons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ultrons. Yeah, you know, like like the old Tron. You know, the movie of course yeah. better than new one. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is better. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but um, I enjoyed the new one though. But uh, it's it, no, it's good sequel. Or whatever. It, it's yeah, it's, it's the good, 3D but... sucked in the movie. It did. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I saw it in the theaters with you, and um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that was like ten years ago. Right? Yeah, it was, like, but yeah. still, it. Uh, I remember it, and um, yeah, I just remember the three D being very underwhelming. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the whole like underage thing that was like that was that creeped me out the most, like. You know, like, it's, for one thing, they couldn't even, like, do, like, a regular type of relationship thing. Like, they had to make it more complex than they needed to, where it's like, you know, okay, let's just say, you know, he's married to this woman that he hates, and she hates him, and she's got a daughter from another relationship, and that's a step No, actually, no, actually, no, it, no. It, it's, it's her sister. 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like that would make more sense. Oh, okay. Instead gotcha. of having this, <laughs> yeah, instead of having this weird relationship where that's her younger sister living with her, and so he is like not the step dad of her but he's like the legal guardian of her it's like why make it more complicated than it needs to be you know what i mean like you're trying to like be all like shakespearean here like oh this is gonna be the movie that's gonna break me out or whatever come on like and then like everybody in town wants to get with her like like, everyone like of course like the kid which you know he's like 17 so it makes sense you know he's like around her age you know or whatever but no he might be 18 or something i don't know but yeah is he like well, yeah, he but works he's for like, a newspaper, but that's right. Yeah, he, he's like the son of the owner of like a newspaper in town or whatever, and he's like the ace reporter. Probably again, nepotism again, nepotism in the movie itself as well as the making of the movie. So yeah, um, and, and he yeah. the the actor who plays him, who is that's Dave Perkins, that character. He is the son of the actor who plays uh, Doctor Vance. Jeez. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Um. So like, yeah, he he wants to get with her, and they, he takes her to like a junkyard to make out with her, and then I think that's when the the car stops working, like all of the electronics start <laughs> malfunctioning, and then um, but yeah, her stepdad slash step uncle, step guardian, whatever, he like tries basically tries to bribe her for sex with like these diamonds that came inside of the like that that were part of like the the eggs or the spiders like they had these little diamond things or whatever that really weren't worth much but if you had a whole bunch of them they would be worth something so like he's like trying to like bribe her which is creepy and then like not to mention like illegal I mean this is Wisconsin in the 70s who knows back then you know whatever but like and then like Later on, the the dude's cousin, who works at, like, a jewelry, like, not a shop, but, like, an appraiser or whatever, he comes over to the house and tries to, it's like, okay, we already got one creepy older dude trying to, like, bribe an underage girl for sex in a movie. It's already weird to begin with and creepy and questionably legal, even that standpoint. Then you got the second guy doing it. It's like, all right, how how, how many times do you want to make this point? Like, what the hell are you doing here? And then, um, and everybody in the movie looks like they belong in the Manson family. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, and I mean everybody, <clears throat> not just like the- <laughs> oh yeah, especially the the wife. Yeah, uh, she, she looks like oh yeah too. Not only that, this whole movie starts off with this creepy, like older adult trying to like seduce the younger slash underage person like like why were they obsessed with this in this movie like this one theme is like cuts across the entire film which is about a fucking spider invasion like what does this have to do with a goddamn giant spider but anyway maybe it's so a like, metaphor but... <laughs> yeah, metaphor the spider is the is 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 the patriarchy trying to uh, <laughs> yeah. press down upon man and uh, woman, and uh, you yeah. take yeah, and, and the yeah, inv- the invasion is <laughs> is is the man trying to invade the woman's body and take her Whoa. over and see and, and invade her soul. And I'm guessing they didn't think that deeply, but <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. That that's like a meandering of like a pothead in the '60s. I don't even think they even had that <laughs> going on for them. <laughs> I think they were just totally trying to be like shocking because, like, it, in the beginning, it's actually the the wife. She's she's like an alcoholic. She's always drinking all the time, and she's like hitting on the the young guy who's waiting on his date. Who's who's her younger sister? He's out the porch waiting on her to get ready, and and but, she's but, out but on the porch. S- but you see, Matt, that's her trying to escape her reality and get out of the oppression that she has from the man. <laughs> Maybe, or it could have just been because she was drunk and horny. You know? <laughs> no, man, this is deeper. <laughs> no, I don't think it's deeper than that at all. Because she apparently gets horny when she gets drunk. Because later on, she um she calls that Dutch guy who owns like the town diner, and basically like asks him to bring some liquor to the house because she ran out of it. And she said that she would be very appreciative. 
when he got there. I wonder what that means. Well, we know what it means because the next scene it shows her in a fucking bathrobe walking him out the door. So, yeah. <laughs> she just made him cookies and um <laughs> and, and yeah and and. and what, when that happened, something spilled on her clothes, and she needed to go put on a bathrobe. Yeah, that's what. You see, that's what happened. Yeah. And the other thing too about this movie, all of the men wear back braces for some reason. I'm not sure if that's a metaphor for something too. Like, what's with the weird back brace thing? Dutch wears one, and because he almost forgets it, oh, and she's like, "Oh, you, you forgot something," and she gives him his back brace. But then later on. The, the the dude who owns the farm has a back brace too. It's like okay. Well, well, I think the dude who had it had it first because that was when he uh, uh, when he was having he almost forgot it when he was uh, sleeping with the uh, with the barmaid. Oh. <clears throat> and then because uh, he almost forgot it when he was going to go home to be with Ev. Oh okay. Yeah. And it's like you don't okay, want to forget this. Yeah. And yeah. I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah. This is the important stuff of the movie we're talking about here. Yeah, I don't know if it was, wait, wait, was it a back brace or was it something to slim his stomach to make him look better, which is. Well, I think that was before they started making those things. Oh, I mean, okay. maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, they've had those things for years. They've had corsets for, you know, well, <laughs> since the middle, middle ages or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, these are the important things to talk about this movie. Not, not the giant spider. The back race really needs to have like a 20 minute long. Um, it's the most the important one. important part of the movie. And I think the back brace is, is symbolic of the fact that society is bracing up the man and not the woman. Yeah. See, and, see, and then, see, see I, I think this whole movie is, a, is, is like a feminist manifesto written by men. Could. Of course, well, of course, it got to be written by men because because those are the real feminists, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I got to prove how much of a feminist I am by talking over you, women. <laughs> uh, see, no, what she really means is this: I got your back, okay? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, because 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 that's because see that oppresses both men and women in their own unique ways. You see, the back brace is like. This man is tired. He needs the rest. And society's like, no, you get back to work. You know, so. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's what the whole movie's about. It's, <laughs> it's, it's about so society's obsession with sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else happened? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, I mean, we we have uh, <clears throat> we have um, another feminist scene in the movie when uh, the doctors meet each other, and uh, we have this doctor from NASA go to meet the uh, local. I don't know, a s- astronomy doctor person. <laughs> astronomy, yeah, that's what she was. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we gotta emphasize the fact that in the scene when they meet, he goes there and he's like, I must be here to meet your husband. Oh no, I mean your, your, your father, um, right. uh, your brother, or you know, just like, well actually, I'm yeah. the doctor. You know, see, I'm telling you, this movie's a, <laughs> it's like, no, I, I remember that scene. It was so awkward to watch because it's like, oh my god, dude. Like, and the, but they never, they never mentioned it after that. That was no. like, the only, like I was like hoping this would be like a, like oh you know you you assume I can't be a doctor because I'm a woman. She just let me go. I'm like what the fuck, lady. But whatever. Well, no. You know, what, hey, what what it's telling what it's telling you, Matt, is that once you are told that women can have power and be in powerful positions, um, men readily accept that. Yeah, but. Like it's very. I'm being sarcastic. It's Anyways, <laughs> very, like, very under underhanded way of doing it because like nothing came from that other than like, oh, uh, okay, I guess a woman can be astronomer. Awesome, like like that's some big fucking revelation. Like, see, and plus, see, too, see what I'm saying is it's it's just it, it's showing how easily we as a society can accept women in 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 uh in in roles of power and um in, oh, in intelligence. Yeah. 
Yeah, because this movie came out in 1970 fucking five, and um, <laughs> we still don't even have a woman president yet. We still have the B two movement, Hollywood, uh, all the um, Weinstein bullshit. You know, so see, yeah, see, so this, much has progressed in 45 years. This movie <laughs> was just years ahead of itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> But, uh, no, God. no, it wasn't, Matt. <laughs> I know it wasn't. Yeah, I, I do remember that scene. Though I'm like, I'm like, oh God, this is awkward. He keeps like listing off all these different male relatives. I'm like, uh, uh, okay, but think about logically. Why else would she be there? Like, <laughs> like, the original scene was him, you know, just mentioning, you know, like forty different types of people that could have been the. <laughs> Like your cousin, your third cousin, uh, your uncle, your step uncle, you know, that what, guy. What, 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 what? Then he started being like, you know, positions she could be. He's like, what are you, the janitor? Are you the um, maid? Or right. Are you the. Um, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, God, it was the most awkward scene I've seen in a movie in it years. It was. It was. And then right after that, she goes, offers him tea. I'm like, okay, so you just blew the point. Like, he's like, what the fuck is this movie trying to do? <laughs> like. Well, it's trying to show you that in society, women can be two different types of. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're looking way too into that. <laughs> I know that um, this movie is, you know, hailed by women world round for the for the uh, the steps that it made in, um, you know, furthering the rights of women in society and uh you know people like Gloria Steinem and uh <laughs> others have praised this great film I'm yeah. assuming <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> uh, probably not <laughs> oh god if only if only and again there's many other reasons why not but if only for the reason of the creepy underage um, step niece or whatever type of thing going on. By the way, she's topless at one point in the movie, so I'm not even sure of the legality of that shit going on. Well, well, like, it, uh, I just the actress, see, the, like, the actress probably was over 18 at the time when they. Shot okay, the good. Because I was like, that is not something I want to see. <laughs> I'm assuming she was, but now I need to look into it because yeah, I'm worried. <laughs> well, again, it, was only, it was only for like a second, but so whatever. But yeah, this movie. All right, so you want to talk about the actual spiders in this movie? <laughs> yes, yeah, so let, let, like, let's let's talk about that a little bit, Matt. What do you uh, have to say about that? <clears throat> oh, spiders were genius, man. I mean, they look so real. I mean, I was so afraid when I saw them like hop out of the dresser at the house. Or like when it's crawling around in the fields and like swallowing people whole and just like leaving like a tiny little carcass, you know, that's left over. Uh, the blender scene was pretty hilarious where the drunk wife is making herself a Bloody Mary and the spider crawls in the blender and she doesn't know it. And she turns it on and then she takes a drink of it and drinks spider. Oh, oh. <laughs> gross. <clears throat> I uh, I do that all the time. <laughs> what you make spider Bloody Marys, spider Marys? Yes, I put Lysol, <laughs> spiders, <laughs> and bleach, and bleach. And because, I because yeah, our, our dear our dear leader, dear fewer, said you know hey, um, you know you could cure the coronavirus by you know giving yourself disinfectant inside of your body. So. There you well, go. But he claimed it was sarcasm, so it's okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I used to know kids like that in, in junior high who would humiliate themselves and then be like, oh, it was a joke! <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. you're making it worse than yourself. Because the greatest uh, place in the world to talk about, to, to, to be sarcastic, <laughs> is at a press briefing six weeks into a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, you remember that great scene in Independence Day when Bill <laughs> Pullman as the uh, president came out and he started making jokes <laughs> about the alien invasion. Yeah, those are in the deleted scenes. They're really good, yeah. though. You remember the scene in this movie that we're talking about when Alan Hale is the 
sheriff came on TV and started making sarcastic jokes about how we're being invaded by by spiders. Mm-hmm. Wait, that was awesome. neither one of those things fucking happen in the movies because the movies make more sense than the fucking reality. <laughs> Yeah, Skipper slash Sheriff Chucklefuck, you know, didn't even make jokes about the giant spider. No. <laughs> at least not at a press conference. <laughs> yeah, maybe when he was drinking at the diner, that's one thing, but you know, <laughs> not not when you're at not when you're on the job. You know, you're then you're all business. I mean, come on. Oh God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. By the way, in the movie, he's getting a bunch of phone calls at first when people are having issues with like their cars not starting. Starting like the I just did a just did a Boston accent by mistake. Cars not starting. Starting. Um, no, I can't do it now. <laughs> it was, it was, I only did it once by accident. Um, you park, and your, he, park your car in Harvard Yard. So anyone who's like under the age of 25, 22 years old, he mentions at some point for a person to go look through the yellow pages and I need to explain that. So yellow pages were a book of phone numbers back in the day. And they, they had like the phone numbers of like businesses, you know, and the white pages were like for like pe- regular people's phone numbers, some businesses, but the yellow pages were more like, I think you had to pay maybe a little bit more to get in yellow pages. Not sure. But, um, but those were the more, um, you know, popular businesses in town. Just wanted to throw that little factoid out there. Yes. That is something good to throw out <laughs> of the movie. Literally, no, no, no. <laughs> no one needs them anymore. Well, you know, unless they don't have a cell phone, but whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> so the spiders, okay, the spiders were huge and they looked like um toy like they literally looked like stuffed animal toys like the ones coming out of the dresser at least that were attacking well the, I, think, the drunk I, wife. I think a lot of them were real oh really yeah like the because i mean a lot of times they were crawling around on the ground for real so oh i think the ones coming yeah. out of the little uh coconut shaped uh pods that they came out of were uh real little tarantulas or something oh god Ugh. yeah scares me yeah. <clears throat> Spiders don't oh, well. freak me out that much. Maybe if they're crawling on me, they would. But They would. I got a weird relationship with spiders myself. I mean, I don't like them. Were you married like, to one at one time? And Yeah, no, I was. No, like, <laughs> I always, like, never wanted to, like, um, destroy cobwebs because I just felt bad. That, like, you know, spider put all this effort into, you know, setting up a trap. For you know, unsuspecting creatures to to murder and eat, and then I felt bad, you know, destroying that trap for them because, like, you know, they need to eat too. And like, I don't know, they're not, they're not. Actually, a lot of spiders are very playful, even like they're not, they're not as scary as you know as people think they are. But I would never have one as a pet. But like, I used to like, I literally used to you used to be a spider in my bedroom a long time ago. And we got this weird thing, like, where, like, it would literally crawl out of its nook if I was, like, had to lie down for too long. And would literally just, like, stare at me for, like, a few seconds, <laughs> like, disapproving of me. Like, you got the light on, boy. So I turn the light off and it goes back to bed. So we kind of had, like, our own, like, we kind of synced up our sleeping schedules, which was nice. Then it bit me and I got a terrible infection. But, um, you know. That's how my last uh, relationship was. Like, oh, but it's um... <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that had nothing to do with the movie. But, um, no. <laughs> uh, so the spiders, spiders are all over the place in this town. They're getting bigger. The, the eggs have these like shitty looking diamonds that are apparently worth nothing. But if you have like a whole bunch of them, they're worth a lot. So farm boy with the back brace wants to collect a bunch of them so he can become rich. He tries to bribe his underage step niece with sex for sex with it. She rejects him because she doesn't think that the diamonds are really worth anything or they're not real diamonds. Then he goes off like, Oh, well, I'm going to find more. He gets killed by the, by the giant spider. And then, um, the wife, the wife gets killed first. She gets killed first. And then he gets killed like a day later. And then, um, 
the, the, the dude's cousin has the diamond. He tries to bribe her for sex. She rejects him. So at least she's at least she's rejecting these creepy old guys. You know, that's that's nice. The least, there, there's a good feminist tale for you right there. So she's she's like the younger generation. See, she's like the one. She's the one that's gonna push the progress even further. You know what I mean? So like, no, I'm I'm looking I'm looking into it too deep. But like. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh boy, this movie was fun. Um, <laughs> it, it, I, I literally actually enjoyed it. So I don't know. Um, but uh, it wasn't that bad. No, yeah. it wasn't that bad. That's the thing. Okay, mm. Matt. Um, so how did this movie like wrap up? <clears throat> so. In addition to all the cool stuff about the movie, like the back braces and all the diamond shit, the boring stuff, and, you know, and, and the phone now. call, and the phone calls, oh, yeah, and the phone calls, and the yellow pages, yeah, the the boring stuff happens now with the spiders attacking people, you know, ripping them in half or swallowing them whole, you know, boring shit. You don't want to watch that stuff. Um, <clears throat> but the best part of it is that the giant spider is. Obviously, a fucking car, um, a bug to be exact, with like spider legs attached to it. I mean, it's so painfully obvious that a car is driving this thing around town. And then you got these um, militia townspeople, like everybody owns a gun, of course, you know. And they're like, they're, we're going to kill a spider. And then, like, you know, like, just creating, like, this sort of mob mentality. And then the sheriff is trying to, like, you know, hold them, you know, hold them down or whatever. But they won't listen to him. So they're all like, we're all going to fight the spider together. And it doesn't do shit, you know, the rifles. And the spider's, like, eat, attacking all of them and eating them. And, and then, you know, they're trying to, you know, shoot off this neutron into the, you know, the place where the to whatever the place where the I don't know exactly where where are they gonna shoot this neutron into exactly just anywhere or like I don't know <laughs> somewhere anyway the the plan was that somehow this would open the time space portal where the spider came from and would kind of put them back to where they were, but it didn't. All it did was make the spider, like, melt into this weird sludge, which doesn't really make any sense to me, because it's like, if you're trying to get the spider to go back to its time and place, why wouldn't it just do that? Why would, would it just melt its skin? I don't understand that logic, but again, I don't really think the science in here really holds up, so... Well, you so, know, yeah. whenever I want to go back home, like, if I leave my house... I have to turn into like some kind of goo before I can, because that's how how science works. It is how science works. So they kill us. This kill us thing. You know that they. You know the townspeople finally. No, at one point they go through like a baseball game or something like that, or I don't remember. In the they're in a field at one point, and no, it wasn't. It was a festival. It was. It was a. Um, what was it like a Polish festival or something or yeah some kind of carnival of some sort or something yeah 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 so the, the thing that the thing is chasing everyone at this carnival and you just see and they, they use this as like the photograph for like the movie itself you see these people running away from this giant spider which is obviously a car chasing people down in like this field and like uh, I know I'm, I know I'm missing some things here but then like they kill they you know they shoot off the neutron. And they, this fire melts into like this disgusting looking sludge. And then, like, I think at one point, though, like at the very last minute, it shows like one little spider, like, somehow managed to survive. And then it, then it freezes, but then they go into this, that preacher doing his fire and brimstone sermon, talking about like the end of time. So it's like, I'm not sure if that was supposed to like build up to a sequel that never got made or whatever. Yeah. Probably, you know, the, the giant spiders invade again or something. Yeah, some bullshit. And this time it's the PT Cruiser. Well, that would be before the PT Cruiser came, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, that, that, that was 
that was a great movie. Yeah, it was. So, um, do you want to hear some trivia here, Matt? <laughs> sure. Okay. <clears throat> there was supposed to be a dramatic shot of the giant spider crushing the house by having the spider drop from a crane onto it while a bulldozer chain chained to a back of the house would pull would pull away. However, when the <laughs> shot was filmed, the spider's legs all went straight up in the air. <laughs> the crew inside working its arms were nearly killed when broken wood from the demolished house went through the spider, coming close to impaling them. <laughs> yeah. See, this movie was so important for its feminist <laughs> message that <laughs> crew members were willing to die for the film. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. That's what happened. Yes. In the opening, Alan Hale Jr. greets Kevin Brody with the line, Hi, little buddy. This is an obvious <laughs> restaurant, re- reference, restaurant, reference to, <laughs> it's an obvious restaurant. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, obvious reference to Hale's role as the skipper on Gilligan's Island, where he called Gilligan little buddy all the time. That's awesome. I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. By the way, that should be the name of a restaurant, obvious restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah, serve like yeah. basic food. Yeah. He- it's a, it's got a picture of food on it. It's just obvious. Like, come on, you know what it is. Yeah. You, you can't even. It's 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 like, what do you want to eat? Well, here it is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. There was a supposed to be a shot of a big spider in a tree bursting into flames to achieve this. The director covered a large prop spider with gunpowder and had two crew members sitting above it in the tree who would drop a match on the spider. The director got the camera up to the very fast uh, frames per second to achieve a slow motion look and had them drop the first match. Nothing happened, so they dropped a second. Still nothing happened, so they lit the entire book of matches and dropped it onto the spider with nothing happening. The director (laughs) turned off the camera and immediately afterwards, a huge explosion and fireball shot up burning the hair off the crew members (laughs) and starting several small brush fires. The director was furious that he wasn't able to get the shot on film. Jesus Christ. (laughs) These guys lost their fucking hair because of a fucked up... Oh, my God. The framework for the VW, um, the Volkswagen giant spider, was recently found in the woods and put on display in Gleason, Wisconsin. Um, Found in the woods? (laughs) Yeah, they just left it there when they were done filming. Um, Oh. Yeah. Wow. Um... This was a surprise box office success. It was one of the top 50 grossing movies of 1975. You got to think, remember, too, this was competing with Jaws. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, Jaws was obviously the top grossing film that year, but still. (laughs) Yeah. And they mentioned Jaws in the movie at some point. Yeah. So this was really made fast, I guess. Um, yeah. In a scene depicting the giant spiders attacking a little league baseball game, the spiders are obviously Volkswagen Beetles with puppet legs attached. <laughs> Tread marks can be seen in several shots. <laughs> um, in May of 2005, there was a Bill Redbane Film Festival in Madison, Wisconsin. That featured this film. Hosting the festival were Michael J. Nelson and Kevin Murphy of the TV series Mystery Science Theater 3000, which had featured the uh, Great Spider Invasion in a 1997 episode. Nelson and Murray and Murphy said, uh, despite their lampooning of the film on MST3K, they actually admired Red Bane because he was able to make the film with such a low budget. Um. <laughs> 
um, stars um, Steve Brody and Barbara Hale pulled in family members to play supporting roles in the film. Brody's son, Kevin Brody, played Dave Perkins, and Hale's husband, Bill Williams, came in to play the role of Dutch, <laughs> as we stated earlier. Um, the film is uh, listed among the 100 most enjoyable bad movies ever made in John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie's Movie Guide. Um, <laughs> cost about $300,000 to make. Um, according to uh, Bill, Ray, Bill Redbane, I'm sorry, uh, Rebane, I'm sorry. Yeah, I said Red. I can't pronounce things tonight. So. <laughs> um, the two uh, writers on the film each approached the story from different directions. Richard L. Huff wrote the original story and kept a very serious tone to the first draft of the script. Robert Easton, on the other hand, lent the film a comical tone, writing most of the colorful dialogue for his character, the creepy uncle, and um, <laughs> and other locals. The film's rather infamous jokes are credited to him to him <laughs> as well. Um, combining both writers' material resulted in an oddball tone for the script. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such a interesting um, film. Uh, Stephen King is a big fan of the film as well. Um, <clears throat> the book that Alan Hale Jr. is always reading in the sheriff's office is titled Flying Saucers Want You. <laughs> well, at least somebody wants me. <laughs> the spiders want you. Do they? Think so? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's nice. There's one on your shoulder right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm scared. <laughs> and now I need a spider Mary. That's gonna be a new drink of mine. The spider. You know, I'm gonna take a bloody Mary and I'm gonna put a spider in it. Spider Mary. Spider Mary. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that was the name of the spider. Mary. Um, yeah, oh, this makes it sad. <laughs> or Mary. Um, she was turned into goo. Um, yeah, it has a name now. <laughs> it's like you can't kill a turkey after you name it and then eat it or something, you know. Um, <laughs> personalize something and then, it, you know. <laughs> um, Okay, I found uh, some reviews here, Matt. Um, here's one that I'm going to read um, about the movie. Uh, this is a 10 out of 10. Posted by wow. Alice Spiral on uh, the Internet Movie Database here um, <laughs> back in uh, February 17th of 2007. Shortly after Valentine's Day, by the way. Um <laughs> <laughs> her her uh her headline is never ill treat spiders because they'll have you <laughs> all spiders who were ever killed go into outer space and are reborn and because of <laughs> messages passed along the spider grapevine they come back in pods and Wisconsin obviously has a higher rate of spider killers so this is why they are there <laughs> I mean, people were flattening spiders with irons for no good reason. The only ones spared are spider love lovers, and they know who they are. Anyway, this is one of my favorite types of horror movie bug attacks. For a low-budget movie, it's as good as you could expect. Plenty of suspense and plenty of silly panicking people the dvd has the director talking about how the movie was made and it seems it was in extreme discomfort as the temperature was well over 110 okay yeah um here's a two out of ten review from aaron 1375 from October 25th, which is right before Halloween. 
of 2002. Um, <laughs> well, there is one giant spider. Why this movie is called Giant Spider Invasion, I will never know. For one, there is only one giant spider. Two, it is, it isn't really an invasion. The plot spar- starts at some redneck's home where from out of the blue something lands in their backyard. Then a bunch of TV stars and B-movie stars try to figure out what happened. Then a giant spider, which I believe is really a dune buggy terrorizing the countryside. <clears throat> um, for the most part, the spiders are just tarantulas, which are rather big, but not giant. You would, uh, love the scene where they discuss black holes and how they relate to the spiders as well as how they kill the spiders because it's a clear example of cheap movie science. <laughs> okay. So that was that. Okay. Got all that wrong, but okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, because because um, it's called the Giant Spider Invasion, not the Giant Spider's Invasion, so it can be only one. It's fine. Whatever. Can, can an invasion be just one thing, though? I I don't know. I, mean, I, I Maybe not. I always assumed anything. Well, I guess because they call it a home invasion when a guy breaks into your house. Right, and plus too, so. oh, it wasn't. It, some of the spiders did grow up and get bigger, so they actually there were multiple giant spiders. I mean, they 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 weren't all as big as like the the um, Volkswagen one was, but there were a few that were actually like almost like human size. So whatever. So or maybe a, not. Maybe that. What's that? Oh, I was gonna say. Here's another review if you want to hear it. Sure. It's called Movie of the Year by Sheepy. (laughs) And this was uh, written on March 4th of 2000, which was around some kind of holiday, I'm sure. Anyways, (laughs) um, (laughs) um, man, was this an absolute perfect movie. Brilliant, exciting acting, interesting dialogue, excellent music. The story just blew me away. It was so enthralling and incredibly original. This was a wonderfully excellent movie. Um, I could not find any defect in it. I've watched it over and over. Everything about it is perfect. The acting is flawlessly good. I can't believe this movie was made in 1975. The special effects are unbelievably amazing. The giant spider looks so realistic. 10 out of 10, a perfect movie. Grab some popcorn and get ready to be entertained by the giant spider invasion. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that was all sarcasm. Um, yeah. yeah. It sounds like <laughs> but I don't know. You know, sarcasm is kind of a interesting topic these days. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless you call, call out, back yeah unless you call it sarcasm who knows um <laughs> so so matt would you recommend this movie to anybody sure i mean it's fun you know it's, it's kind of stupid but you know like get some friends together you know later on if we you know if we can still do that and uh <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mean that sarcastic. I just mean you know. Well, I know. You know get, get a group of friends together and just kind of you know watch a bad movie on purpose, and because you know we we reviewed a lot of bad movies on this show, and you know we've we've discovered that there are movies that are so bad that they're funny, and there are some that are just so bad they're boring. This is not the boring kind. Uh, no, not at all. I enjoyed it thoroughly, actually. Um. And like I said, this is the greatest uh, feminist manifesto to come out of cinema in the last 100 <laughs> yeah. years. And oh, wow. uh, yes, you know, it's there's, you know, Norma Jean and all those other movies that are about, you know, feminists and stuff. And, you know, nope, this movie is <laughs> the greatest movie to, uh, yeah. you know, help uh, further the you know feminist values in society and uh yep. by the way i am being sarcastic um <laughs> this is what real sarcasm is <laughs> yeah i just want to teach that to people listening 
because saying something seriously in a press conference and then the next day calling it sarcasm <laughs> is not sarcasm. <laughs> Most of the things I say in my life are sarcasm, and you can tell that by the snarky way I say them. <laughs> When you say them directly to a doctor (laughs) in a press conference being televised worldwide, (laughs) in a serious tone, that is not sarcasm. Nope. No. (laughs) But yes, this is the greatest uh, feminist manifesto ever put to film. And... um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I highly recommend everyone watch this movie. And yeah. I'm not talking about just, you know, people that want to watch a bad movie. I'm saying this is the greatest movie to come out in 1975 besides Jaws. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's a lot of movies that came out in 1975. Um, yeah. I'm sure that uh, there, there, there might have been some other movies. In 1975. Okay, so I mean, this movie came out the same year as Jaws, as we've said. One mm-hmm. one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Oh wow! Shampoo. Dog Shampoo. day. Dog day afternoon. <clears throat> the return of the pink panther. Ah. Three days of the condor. Funny Lady, The Other Side of the Mountain, Tommy, The Apple Dumpling Gang, <laughs> Rollerball. Um, that's just a few. Um, Barry Lyndon came out that year. Um, French Connection 2. Um, the Stepford Wives. You know, all these... You know, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You know, all these shitty movies that are nowhere near as good as the giant spider invasion. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Because tell me, do any of those have a good feminist manifesto buried buried deep within their plots? I mean, not even close. Especially... Return the Pink Panther. That's just mockery right there. Yes. You know, they use the color pink as a way to actually, you know, make fun of women as opposed to, you know, lifting them up, you know. So, yes. you know, it's ob- obvious, you know, just mockery that's just oozing out of those kind of movies, you know. And then you have the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is just totally downplaying the idea of femininity by having, um, you know, Tim Curry dress up like a woman. Oh, I know, yeah, because, you know, transgender people are so bad, you know, they're, you know, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> this is sarcasm, yeah, by the way, people, is, no, no, that, that, that definitely is sarcasm, yeah, yes, <laughs> uh, oh, <clears throat> boy, so, God. I tell you what, though, Tim Curry can pull off any look he wants, oh, yeah, <laughs> any look he wants, <laughs> <clears throat> Tim Curry is a god, anyways, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> So, uh, anything else, Matt, before we, uh, sign off today? Uh, you know what? Not, re- well, <clears throat> I am going to set up, you know, a website soon that I don't have it, you know, ready right now, but, you know, where I'm going to, you know, kind of put, you know, like a lot of my music and stuff on, like sell my albums and stuff like that. So, you know, whenever, whenever I get that up, I'll maybe, Maybe I'll plug that, you know. Maybe you know, other stuff too. Some of my articles, some of my writings, just you know, a, a general creative space, you know, of mine. All, all of the brilliance and the not so brilliant craziness that comes out of my mind will probably be up on that site at some point. So, I mean, for right um, now, you might want to follow Matt on Facebook. He's got a fan page, uh, Matthew Haas. <laughs> I think it's called Matthew. I always forgot the name. Is it? Is it Matthew? No, it's it's hostility. It's it's um. Well, well, the uh the actual fan page is uh oh yeah, yeah. is just Matthew Haas. Yeah, yeah. You you search for it and you'll see like a superhero looking version of myself. That's me 
Mike does this great Photoshop work and he he basically made me look like a really muscular superhero dude. It's pretty awesome. And then I, I use that, you know, picture. Yeah, just look for that fan page and I'm sure that the in the in the near future yeah. links to uh your uh website will be up there. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna play I'll play a little song or a little music to kind of commemorate this great spider as well as to kind of say sorry, you know, to the spider, you know, that they had to kill, kill it, you know, because, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't his fault or her fault, probably her fault because this is again, like a feminist um, anthem, you know, for being kind of taken into a different time and space world that you know doesn't belong then it was just trying to eat some food i mean that's what all living things need needs food to live so sorry to the spider but you know here's here's a little song you know for for that okay let's get get situated here situated there we go That was like the greatest song I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, just for anyone who's listening, my my real music is much better than that. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah so if, 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 if you've listened to the show, you the theme song to the show is uh is 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 um written by Matt and uh, things of yeah. that nature. So um yeah um. <laughs> But no, that was the greatest song I've ever heard in my life. It's, <laughs> okay. it's it's right up there with uh, anything by Justin Bieber or um, <laughs> New Kids on the Block or um, <laughs> or uh, Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Sonny and Cher. Yeah. <laughs> Those three artists. Yeah. <laughs> Those three. And you. Yeah, are the four greatest artists of all time. Wow, that's 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 a it's a tall order. Well, I, I I shouldn't be so sarcastic about that because you actually are talented. Anyways, um, unlike uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. No, it's so obvious. Just like the restaurant, you know. So yeah. yes, you know, the obvious restaurant has obvious music in the restaurant too. Yes, it's like. It's it's not really Muzak or anything. It's just there. It's just there. It's obvious. I mean, yes. It, uh, <laughs> it's it's just obvious restaurant music. Um. So, uh, anyways, um, before we go, uh, make sure you uh, you know, check out ColinPark dot com. We got stuff on there. Um, right now, um, if you also check the uh, links in the show notes, um. There's a link to a really cool Cullen Park Productions t-shirt that you can get. It's only $20. It's got a really cool our logo on it. But the cool thing about it is $10 of that goes to help further our adventures in podcasting and filmmaking. Also, uh, the other $10 goes to a company that I really love called Jupe Mode that is located in Toledo, Ohio, where we are based um and during these tough times uh supporting local businesses is really important and um whether it's local to you or just local to uh you know somewhere because everything starts out as a local business um and it's better to support a local business that has a possibility of going out of business due to this pandemic than some big corporations you know yeah and yep. um so I, I say buy a shirt. You know, they've got other shirts on their website too. I'd prefer it if you buy one of ours, but they've got a lot of cool other shirts on there too. Um buy one of ours, buy one of anything that they have on there. They've got a lot of cool ones that are also supporting a lot of other local businesses, which is really cool. 
Um, also, um, check out our Patreon and uh, donate. Um, help support us uh, right now, especially we, uh, you know, are looking for uh, ways to make sure that this podcast continues and we can continue to bring you the great films of feminist manifestos that we do all the time because every single one of our films has that underlying current to it. Yeah. You know what we should do though? What? At one point we should do a counterpoint and we should do a men's rights activist um, film, at, which is pretty much every film. <laughs> and then, um, and then, the like, like mean girls. And, um, <laughs> <wait>. <laughs> Oh God, we're, we're so weird. I know. So, um, <laughs> anyways, um, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. I think this is all getting to me, Matt. Uh, yeah, me too. I think I'm being invaded by giant spiders right now. You know what, though, this one was this one was a long one, though. It's good, though. It's this yeah. one's not a short episode, so that's good. Yes. So, um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, also, I mean, feel free to email us if you have any suggestions for any movies you want us to talk about. We're more than happy to take your suggestions and uh, do that. Also, um, another thing about those t-shirts that I was talking about, I forgot to mention, if you buy one and then send a uh, screenshot of your receipt to uh, Mike at CullenPark.com, and you live in the Toledo area or are willing to travel to it, you can be an extra in a future film that we have. Ooh. So, yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> and, and if you don't want to do that, um, this isn't broadcast anywhere besides on here. Um, if you want to be on a future episode of our podcast, we can set that up too. Um, buy a shirt and let us know and you can come on and talk about any movie you want to. Any movie. Yes. Well, well, not any movie. I mean, we're not going to talk about a- we're not going to talk about porn or snuff. See, yeah, yeah, that's what or, I was thinking. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't, yeah, don't try to find some kind of loophole. You know, yeah. no, yeah. any <laughs> film within reason that kind of would fit the mold of our show. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but just you know, you know, send that to Mike at Colin Park dot com, and uh, other than that. Um, like Matt's page, like our page, do it up. <laughs> Dub it up. No, no. Dub it up. Oh, it. And, uh, no. and, uh, dab it up mm. and, uh, doob it up <laughs> and, uh, whatever. Um, whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Right. Peace, love, and wash your hands. Stay safe, people. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.